So good morning, everybody. Great to be here. So first thing to say is, of course, welcome to the West Midlands. I'm going to talk about the difference we think we can make to, I'll call it your system, by how we're going about it in the West Midlands. But as I say, the welcome, it's great that you bring your conference here again. Frankly, the more people who come to Birmingham and the West Midlands for their events, the better for us. If you got completely lost coming from New Street, I apologise. It is all in the name of progress, honestly. The one thing I guarantee is it'll be different next year. We don't know quite how, but because we're never going to finish the building works. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but hopefully you go away thinking that place is on the move. But genuinely, I hope you have a great time here. Normally, anybody who comes leaves with an incredibly improved impression of what's going on here. So genuinely, we do love hosting conferences here. In terms of what we're going to do, we'll talk a little bit about the West Midlands context. We'll talk about what devolution is doing, particularly to the whole skills agenda. Then we'll come to talk about how we're working with FE here. Give the praise, give the challenges to the whole sector and think about what partnership there means. And then we'll just talk about next steps. So that's what we're going to try to run through. In terms of the West Midlands context, let's have a little look. This is what we're talking about. Some of you will know, but others might have thought it's just a destination on a rail map. So that's the area, three local enterprise partnerships, the Black Country in purple, the Greater Birmingham and Solihull in orange, and Coventry and Warwickshire in blue. Add it together, it's about four million people. And the dark colours through the middle are the core combined authority area, the sort of mayoral electoral area. But we see it as one geography. And just to sort of illustrate that point, if you think of our biggest private sector employer, Jaguar Land Rover, they have five plants in Wolverhampton, in Solihull, in Birmingham, headquartered in Coventry, all the research in Warwickshire. Just proves the point, it is one economy. And we're doing quite nicely as an economy. To any Brummies, Coventrians, Wolfrunians in the room, this is something we can take some pride in. It simply shows, and you don't need to see all the detail, it simply shows the rate of economic growth by the different regions of the UK over the last six years. Now, the story is very obvious. London's the driving force. For those of us who believe in devolution, that's good because that's the engine. But we've also got to think about how the other areas of the country are playing their full role. And the simple point is the West Midlands has emerged through everybody's hard work as the leading region. And the great thing for those of us who've worked hard on that is if I showed you this chart for the previous three decades, we would have been bottom. So we've gone from bottom to top. So is this whole notion of working together, devolution, working for us? This slide would suggest that there's something here that is working out. And coming right up to date with the stats, this was literally last Tuesday's stats for job creation. And again, the story, London's top, but the West Midlands was best region of the country for jobs created in the last year. And if we'd lots of, looked at lots of other stats, inward investment, exports, whatever, we'd have the same picture. So there's a good backdrop. But in a sense, it's that backdrop that gives us the opportunity to tell our story. And the way we're going to do that, we've got two great opportunities there, with Coventry being the UK City of Culture in 21, and Birmingham, the Commonwealth Games host in 22. Great opportunity for reconsidering the impressions of this place around the globe. But there's an irony. Despite all of that progress, we've still got some enormous challenges, which we should be honest about. The slide is headed there. Too many communities aren't benefiting from this growth. These slides show the three LEP areas, Black Country, Coventry and Warwickshire, and then uh, Greater Birmingham and Solihull. The levels of economic inactivity against the UK. And we've obviously got, with the exception of Coventry and Warwickshire, worse levels in grey for total population, but particularly the levels of economic inactivity in our BME population. And bear in mind that nearly 40% of the region are from BME communities, the highest of any full conurbation anywhere in Europe. So this is a real challenge to us. And so is this. We're always hearing that youth unemployment has fallen by 40% is the number the government give. Actually, in the West Midlands, it's higher than that over the long term. But the point of the slide is very obvious. That fall has stalled. And in the last year, it's actually nudged up. 
Now, this is mostly because of the introduction of universal credit and the different classifications. So I don't want us to be too worried by that nudge up at the end, but it has stalled. So the question for all of us, and I'm going to come on to talk about the sort of partnership working we've got here, is why is this happening? Seems strange. We're creating all those jobs, but we've got this irreducible minimum. So what is it saying to us about how we've gone about things in the past and how do we need to change? It's a tough question. So, yeah. so that's the context of the region. Let's next then have a look at devolution and how it contributes to this, and particularly how it then comes to the FE sector. So devolution. Of course, it's all about driving the economic outcomes. It's about new industries, exciting. It's about getting cash from the government. And some of the images here are the new industries that will be based here. The image on the left, I have to just tell you, sorry, the far right, as you look at it, on the far right, that is the building on the other side of the road here, the new HSBC Retail Bank headquarters. Move from Canary Wharf to Birmingham, official opening next week. Incredible that a bank should come back to the place, of course, that the Midland Bank was born. So new industries, exciting. But devolution isn't just about that. It's also about how we work together. It's actually to say, you know, those people in the West Midlands, they can work out some of these issues themselves. It's about that spirit of co collaboration. Us not waiting to be told by central government what to do, but us actually taking responsibility for our own destiny. And I'm, of course, the most biased man in this room, but I do believe the West Midlands is stepping forward to take this opportunity in perhaps the leading way around the country, alongside, of course, Greater Manchester, who kicked off this whole debate first of all. And what have we done? This is the sort of roll call, a couple of devolution deals, being with Greater Manchester, the trailblazers for the local industrial strategy, a deal around housing cash, particular deal around skills, which I shall talk about, and then making sure that at each budget, and indeed the CSR coming up, we get investments to support what has been devolved. It's all to one plan. And talking of the one plan, here it is. It's a very simple slide, but it makes some very important points. What it says, is that for this place to be competitive, to continue to lead the UK's economy, we've got to decide where we are genuinely brilliant. It's hardly insightful. Think about your competitive advantages, play to them. They're the sectors across the top. And when I talk about being competitive, I'm not talking about with Manchester and Leeds and Liverpool. This is for us to beat the other big industrial cities of the world. Detroit, Chicago, on we go. So, the sectors across the top, won't surprise you, advanced manufacturing, this is the home of the automotive industry, it's the home of aerospace in some, uh, uh, some areas, and then you go across to the other sectors. But then the cross-cutting pieces, these are the pieces that the combined authority must deliver and has the power to deliver in order to enable our businesses to succeed. So, housing, skills and transport. Simple point, everything's been changed by digital, and we have got to be brilliant in digital, to be a leading economic region. Think about all the sectors we know have been changed by retail already. Travel, hospitality, retail, it's happening to everything, even manufacturing. And therefore, it was great news that just a few months ago now, this region was chosen by the government as the national testbed for 5G technology. The image is with the digital minister in one of our ITU hospitals to make the point that 5G will change how public services are delivered. Just a word then on the other cross-cutting pieces, housing and transport, before we come to skills. If we're to deliver an inclusive economy, we need more homes for young people. Great news, that is being delivered in the West Midlands. And of course, construction skills, critical to this. And all credit to our colleges, new cash come in through our skills deal, investing in basic construction skills to drive this number ever forward. And then in terms of transport, the orange lines on this map show the new transport routes that we're putting in with reopening railway lines, building out our metro, rapid bus routes, and they map it onto the indices of deprivation for our conurbation. And you can see the point. We're trying to drive the orange lines through some of the most deprived communities so they can connect with the areas where the job growth is fastest. So, housing and transport. But let's then come for the rest of the presentation to the whole question of the work we're doing with FE around skills. So, 
The image here is with uh, Lowell Williams, who most of you will know, principal of Dudley College, and obviously Damien Hines and myself, on the day we launched our skills deal with central government back in July. In June, the region came together to say, we will have a regional skills plan. The idea, very simply, if you've got your local industrial strategy where you're the trailblazer for the country, you need your skills strategy to align with that. So the industries across the top, we've got to develop the skills for those. And then we said to government, we need your help, frankly, to enable us to fulfill that strategy. And on that day, there was not a huge amount of money, about 69 million pounds of new cash, some new powers, and critically, an ability to pool the underspend on the apprenticeship levy within the region. So we do have a plan and some powers to deliver it. But the most important point I want to make to this audience is the way in which our FE sector has come together to provide new leadership across the system. The image here is the front cover of the uh, uh, brochure for the FE group. It's titled there, the West Midlands Further Education Skills and Productivity Group. And there's a simple point to be made here. Our 21 colleges have come together across the region to say, how are they going to contribute to the system that needs to be put in place to deliver that skills plan? And I have huge admiration for the uh, humility and, frankly, uh, collaborative working that the colleges have shown to do that. From someone in my position, it makes it much more straightforward. And it's all about them being connected with employers, with HE, to deliver on that plan. And just a classic example of how this has worked. If I think of our Institute of Technology bids, they've come together to think who should lead each of these bids. And they've also thought about how we move forward our adult education budget. That will be fully devolved to us come August next year. The stats are there, and there's some challenges in the stats. 126 million delivered in the previous year, 280 providers, is that right? Can that really be manageable? That's what we've inherited. And 63% of enrolments just at level one. And you say to yourself, is that right? The question there, has, the answer has to be no. And I'll give you the obvious reason why. We're excited about our industrial strategy. What does that mean for the type of jobs we're gonna need? The majority of them are gonna need higher level skills, level four and above. At the moment, only 29% of our population are qualified to level four and above. We've got 50% of our population qualified just to level one and two. And in time, about 30% of the jobs are gonna be there. So there's clearly an imbalance. So there is definitely a question about how we are using this and our colleges will work through with us how we answer that. And just to call out one college, I was at Walsall just the other day and what they are now doing, one of our best colleges, what they are now doing is mapping all of their activity against our industrial strategy and looking at the different levels within that. So this can be used to drive that forward. And we've got big expectations of our FE partners. If you take another area, digital. I said it was the golden thread changing everything. 128,000 adult education enrolments in a year in the West Midlands. 29,000 jobs in digital by 2020. But on the right hand side of that slide, we've only got 309 adults undertaking level three in digital. So clearly what that's telling us is that we have got to move through the technical education in a different way. And talking of technical education, we've got some brilliant examples. Here we see at the World Skills Live last week at the NEC, Dudley College's example of wheel tracking work, brilliant. And here we see at South and City College, the launch just a month ago of their new uh, bus maintenance arrangement done in collaboration with National Express, a great collaboration, industry and the college working together, all credit to Mike and his team there. And then at Solihull College, there's a theme here, the uh, aerospace maintenance facility there up at their Chelmsley Wood campus there. So we've got some brilliant examples of technical pieces. But what I take from this is somehow the system isn't allowing you to move into sufficient of this year. I know you want to do it. There's clearly a funding issue. So our responsibility is to keep pressing the case in those deals with Treasury so that you do get what you need for technical education and you get the practical kit and investment to be able to do more of this, very clear. So, next steps across this region. 
very clear. We've spent time setting ourselves up. I've told you how the colleges have come forward into that in our overall structure. We have actually now got to, as the slide says, focus on delivery. And this slide here uh, was actually the day we launched what we call our apprenticeship promise. And that was quite simple. We've got, uh, in this region at the moment, uh, about 2,000 17-year-olds, just 17-year-olds, who are NEETs, at the same time as we've got 1,600 apprenticeship vacancies. So we've got to work on aligning those. Evaluate the impact. This is a new way of doing things on this regional devolved basis. How is it working? Is it make a difference? And then ultimately, when we've proven it does work, we will need to secure further opportunities, further funding, further devolution to push forward the economy of this region. And all I'll say is the FE sector, that's why I'm wearing this badge, it's absolutely clear to everyone here, the FE sector offers leadership here and offers a lot of the solutions to what the economy of this region needs in the future. And we're determined to work together and make a success of it. Thank you very much indeed.